All right, so my name is Kyle Halleck. I'm the current pitching coach at Malone University. Um, I was born August 6th, 1988. Uh, from what my mother tells me, it was the hottest day of 1988, and that was in Sandusky, Ohio. Um, I left Sandusky when I was 18 to go play college baseball at Kent State University. Um, and then from there, I spent time kind of all over the country playing baseball. <clears throat> and when I was done playing, I began coaching, first in Massachusetts and now here at Malone. Um, <clears throat> I have a father who just turned 50 last year. Uh, his name is Dan Hallock. Um, <clears throat> my mother is near that age. I won't give that. Uh, is she would appreciate that um, they uh, were high school sweethearts my mother's name is Jennifer and I have a sister who's six years younger than me and her name is Kimberlyn and she currently attends Kent State University and she's studying to be a nurse uh, so that's my f immediate family uh, I have a lot of cousins uncles aunts um, my grandparents on my mother's side are still uh, living. Their name are, is Tom and Paula York. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at today. When did you start playing baseball? Um, I started playing baseball when I was six years old in, in what was called the Eagles Adam League at the time in Sandusky, Ohio. Uh, for a team called Country Imported Motors, our colors were yellow with black lettering. And uh, my father was an assistant coach on the team. I would have been six when I started. And I played first base uh, in the outfield a little bit. Um, that was where I hit my first... Uh, I would call it home run over a snow fence that was set up just outside of the infield. Um, never really hit for much power after that. So <clears throat> that's where it started. And then I moved out to the VFW League in Perkins Township the year after that and played there for three years uh, prior to being picked up on a, by an elite travel team. Uh, which then took me all the way into my high school years. So your father played a big role in your baseball as a child? Correct. In your childhood, right? Yes, correct. Um, he, his role uh, as a coach would always be to warm up the pitchers, um, but he played a major role uh, in my mental development as well, he kept track of the number of pitches you know I would throw uh, and everyone on our team would throw. Um, he would sit on a uh, bucket with a pad on it, and he and there would be a home plate in front of him. And I can remember when I was young and I had just started kids pitch. Uh, we'd get out on the sidewalk in front of our house on Buckingham Street in Sandusky, Ohio, and I would throw pitches to him, and if I threw one, you know, outside of his reach or grasp, uh, he'd just look at me and point behind him, and then I had to go run and get it. There was no backstop. There was no nothing like that, so that allowed me to learn to pitch and compete within the strike zone. Uh, because if I threw anything that short hopped him or went over his head, uh, I was the one responsible for going to get it. And, uh, you know, after the first couple times, y you don't really like that uh, extra activity if you can prevent it. So that's, that's kind of what I learned through that process. Um, he... He told me I was, you know, on the right track. That was a... Uh, a term he frequently used. Um, not a guy who handed out compliments, but I wasn't looking for him anyways. Um, I was just looking to compete and see where I matched up with kids my age, but especially kids two to three, two to three years older than me. 
Um, I liked playing uh, older competition because you can't get away with things uh, that you may get, be able to get away with when you're playing against kids your age. So uh, that allowed me to find success more than one way. Uh, you know, develop secondary pitches. Uh, you know, hit pitches away. Uh, hit you know, breaking balls, when kids started throwing breaking balls and they were 15, 16 years old and I was, you know, 11 or 12 playing with them. So uh, it just sped up my learning curve and, and I wanted that. I needed those challenges um, because he saw uh, the potential to, you know, take baseball uh, and, and sports in general to a, you know, a place most people don't get to go to. So. So obviously you liked uh, you liked sports a lot as mm -hmm. you were growing up. Um, was baseball the only sport you played, or did you play multiple sports? I played well growing up. You know, just kind of uh, hanging out with your friends. You, you find you found games back in the '90s. Okay, back in the '90s, you found ways to invent games around the neighborhood. So, you know, you you grab some sidewalk chalk and. Uh, you know, you draw your basketball court uh, where your hoop is, or you go out in the street uh, and you kind of drop a tennis court and you say you have to hit it over this line and hit it between these lines. We kind of did all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we found ways in my neighborhood to invent games. Um, so I mean, I played tennis growing up. I played, you know, I played one year of soccer uh, in a youth league. I played football, flag football, uh, basketball, baseball, golf. Um, so I played all those different kind of sports growing up. I just liked competing. I liked trying to figure out who the best in the group was, and then I kind of just wanted to go after them and, and see, you know, where I stacked up. And and if I wasn't the best, just find a way to practice and become better. Um, as I got into, you know, as I got into elementary school, junior high, it was kind of, it whittled down to football, basketball, baseball, and then play golf uh, with my, you know, uh, dad, my uncle, my grandparents, um, all that kind of stuff. So it narrowed to three or four um, and just changed with the seasons kind of thing. So I liked the competition. You know, from a, getting a test score back to a project, my buddies and I growing up, it was, you know, what'd you get on that? I got a 98. Oh, how'd you do? You know, I got a 96. Well, that's good. But uh, it was just, a, it was a competition. Everything was a competition mm -hmm. with, with my friends and I growing up. <clears throat> yeah, so um, when do you think you first realized that... Um, Baseball kind of stood out to you, and you knew that that, uh, that was probably the route you wanted to go with in college. Actually, I tried to put that off as much as I could. I enjoyed playing basketball more than I enjoyed playing baseball. I profiled better being a left-handed pitcher uh, for baseball at the highest level than I would have been, say, as a point guard in basketball. So the major decision came with, my dad and I was when I was in seventh grade, and I had gotten asked to play, you know, AAU basketball, and that was when AAU was starting to get big. That would have been 2001. <clears throat> so I get asked, and my dad checks out the schedule of that. And baseball for us, when I was 11, 12 years old, started after the first of the year in January. At that time, I was playing for an elite travel team that would go on to win a couple national championships, a state championship, uh, and just, you know, would travel all over the Midwest to, to, to play the highest competition. Um, so when my dad figured out that those schedules didn't really pair up, um, he asked me, and my heart wanted to play basketball. But all my buddies and stuff like that, they played they played baseball, and he's he just kept telling me, um, baseball is going to be, you know, your ticket, your best avenue to uh, you know help you out college wise and possibly into professional baseball. So 
you know, I trusted him. You know, everything he had told me to that point was was right on um, about who I was and, and what I wanted to be. So uh, him, he and I had a relationship to where I put, you know, I put my young career in his hands with, with and that decision was was with him and my mom and, and our family. And that's the route we chose to go. And it, it ended up working out pretty well. Um, but I always enjoyed the atmosphere of basketball, um, the pace of it, the crowd, the you know excitement that you know every single play has. And uh, baseball can be boring to some, especially when you watch it on on TV in a box and you don't get to see the whole field, the stadium, and all that kind of stuff. And um, it was never boring to me, but the pace of basketball excited me because it was constant, and uh, I enjoyed being active, moving, doing all those kind of things as a kid. So I liked, I liked the pace of that. So, um, I would realize, I would say like 11, 12 years old, or, you know, our head coach and the travel team said, you know, you, you can be as good as you kind of want to be. And I wanted to be the best. Um, so we would start traveling around my dad and I, and we'd watch, uh, elite players in the area, guys that were going Division One, guys that would get drafted out of high school, guys that would go on to be first-rounders after college. We started traveling around Ohio, and what we did was, rather than watch like the whole game, I started to focus on one player, on that best player, and just watched every single movement he did. Uh, watch how he carried himself, watch how he hustled, watch how he played the game, watch how he talked to his teammates do all those kind of things and rather than watch you know the game top to bottom and you know the final score didn't really matter as opposed to what did that guy do and how can I start to do that you know as a 10 11 12 year old and then once you hit uh, you know junior high you start attending varsity baseball games and those kids are 16 17 18 years old and you're 12 or 13 and my father and you know, if I'd go with my uncle, they'd ask me the same questions. Do you think you can go out there and compete with those kids right now? What do you have to do right now to be ready to compete with those kids the day you walk through Perkins High School uh, when you're 14 years old and a freshman? So those were the questions that were being thrown my way uh, by my parents, by my family, and that just allowed me to go out there and do it on my own. Um, when I'd wake up, most kids had Cedar Point passes being from Sandusky. Uh, that stopped for me when I was about 10. So uh, I, I'd say we made the choice at that point to play, to play baseball and compete, you know, in basketball and football and, and have fun with golf from that age. And to be completely honest, I think that's kind of around the age where you need to make that decision. Um, so there were some things that uh, I didn't really make options as as a you know maybe a normal 10 11 year old kid in Sandusky would you know go to go to Cedar Point or go to you know Soak City and all that kind of stuff or go take summer vacations you know our summer vacation was spent in the baseball field and it was trying to win championships and and trying to you know figure out how far we can take this um, and that was the best experience I could have had as a child. I wouldn't trade a single day of it, uh, regardless of, of any outcome, then or now. So uh, that's that's the choice I wanted to make. And uh, my parents didn't force me at all. I remember asking my dad, you know, when did you know uh, I wanted, you know, I kind of had it. And he said, uh, I knew when I didn't have to ask if you practiced or anything today. You know, I'd come back, I'd ask your mom in the summer, uh, did he do stuff? And she's like, yep, he does stuff every single day. So, uh, you know, the video game systems were coming out, all that kind of stuff. I had them. They bought them for me, uh, but it was only for a rainy day. That's it. That's when you use them. Uh, it's when you can't go outside, uh, when the sh when the driveway can't be shoveled when all that kind of stuff can't be done that's when you play the video games uh, at least that's how I was raised and it was good it was it, it worked it worked um, 
And I think it could work for, you know, a lot of people. But um, there were some things that were options. There were other things that weren't. And that, that's, what had, that's what had to happen to get to where I wanted to get to. So in high school, how did you manage your time between sports, school, and girls? Okay. Um, I would say, you know, my freshman year, it was all about getting off to a good start. So uh, my mom's a fourth grade teacher. Uh, so education was, is very important. Um, so I would, you know, I was enrolled in all the honors classes my freshman year, and I had, uh, I had a good, you know, a high 3.9, 3.8 GPA, but what it, what was happening was, you know, I was getting moved up to JV and uh, football. Um, I had to play, you know, JV football uh, along with freshman football, and then the winter came, and I was put straight on JV for, for basketball, and then eventually moved up to varsity after seven or eight games. Um, and then the same thing happened in baseball. So I was, you know, 15 years old, uh, playing, hanging around 17, 18 year old kids, uh, had to make really good decisions. Um, and luckily the guys I was playing with were looking out for me. I never had that pressure of, you know, doing things you shouldn't be doing at that age. Um, if someone asked me to, I, I had the ability to say no, and then people dropped it. Um, so that was that was really good. Um, I would say a normal day for me would have been you wake up, you go to school, you come back, and normally, depending on which season I was in, so varsity basketball, we would practice. Um, we would practice. I would say you know either three to five or five to seven. So if it was five to seven. I get off the bus, get back to my parents' house about 3:15, 3:30, and I did my homework right then and there. I did it so that way it was out of the way. Um, I had just learned it. I had just gone over it. I might as well do it while it's fresh in my mind. That way I can just focus on basketball and whatever else I want to do the rest of the night. I didn't have that hanging over my head. Um, so I would say. I had a set schedule for myself. Uh, my mom taught me how to organize my time uh, and what and where I need to, to do things. So after school, if I didn't have practice, homework. I had to have study hall. Any homework I had gotten at that point in the day already, like let's say you have study hall from 11 to 11.50. So anything I had from 7.30 to 11 homework wise was done. So I, I knocked that stuff out as soon as I got it. Uh, I didn't want that stuff lingering or, uh, you know, having to do it at, you know, 8 o'clock at night when everyone else was on America Online back then and, and chatting it up. So uh, I wanted to get that stuff done, take care of my business, be done. That way I could focus on sports, you know, catching up with, with what was going on with my group of friends and and what the plans were and, and things of that nature so yeah that would be in high school that was kinda just how it went get the stuff get to study hall knock it out stay ahead of it knock out projects early in the quarter early in the semester that way you didn't have to panic or worry about it and and then the rest of your semester would come down to you know winning championships with your friends that's kinda how I looked at it if you had to say in high school, what were your top one or two moments in sports? In sports, I would say my mom's favorite game I ever pitched would have been my freshman year of high school. So I grew up in Sandusky, and one of the things that happened to me luckily was there were a group of kids three years older than me that lived a couple streets over within the neighborhood I was out playing catch my 
I would say I was probably like nine or ten. I had just gotten on the uh, you know hard tongue title, the elite travel team, and I'm playing catch with a tennis ball in front of four uh, brick steps in front of our house in Sandusky. And every day I'm out there, I'm just throwing pitches up against it, and I'm announcing, talking to myself like I'm the announcer, pitcher. I'm also the shortstop when the ball comes right back to me and hits. I was playing all all the positions kind of. I was pitching full games and working on, you know, throwing balls in the strike zone. So when my dad got home from work, I was ready to go and we could roll. Um, But what happened was a kid named A.J. Fresh came over. And uh, Brett McCarthy lived two doors down. Jason McCormick, Aaron Upfer, uh, A.J., they all lived one street over. And all their buddies would always come over to AJ's house because AJ had a big side lot that they all played uh, anything from you know tackle football to baseball, wiffle ball. A lot of our baseball stuff was aluminum bats, a tennis ball, guy on the mound, and we played what's called pitcher's hand. So you, you hit the ball, guy gets it, throws it to the pitcher, the pitcher acts as the first baseman. Fire hydrant was first, a dirt mound was second, uh, a post along the fence was third, and this dirt spot was home plate. If you hit it over the sidewalk, over the street and over the sidewalk in the air and it didn't get caught, it was an automatic home run. So that's kind of what we did. Well, AJ rides his bike, and he sees me out there playing catch. He's like, hey, you know, I'm AJ. Would you like to come, would you like to come play baseball with my buddies? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So I'm in like you know, probably like fourth grade, and they're in seventh. And from that day, from when he asked me, that was probably one of the biggest moments that helped me become good at a young age because I was playing with older kids. And once I got back playing with my buddies, it was, the game was slow. Everything was slow. You know, I was learning, you know, how to be successful. So I get into high school, right? Now, AJ, Brett, all these guys, Jason, Aaron, uh, Aaron Kowaleski, all those guys I played against in those games from age 10 to 14, we have to play them for the conference championship in baseball my freshman year. So the day before the game, Our shortstop, who's a senior, comes up to me. He's like, Kyle, you're going to pitch tomorrow. And I'm like, you know, I'm having a pretty good freshman year. I'm, I think, 4-0, something like that, and pitching well. we got to win the conference. And for our seniors, it was their chance to win four straight conference championships, which at that point had never been done uh, in our high school's history. So there I am, 15 years old. And I'm, you know, hanging out, and he tells me that, and I said, do you think so? He's like, yep, you're going to start that. So I'm like, okay, you know, I I go to school the next day, and I've got, you know, uh, those those compression shorts on that you wear. I have those on underneath my, my school uniform. That's how ready I was for that game. So we get to the game, and... The wind's blowing in, and St. Mary's had been in the state final four the year before. They returned a lot of guys, and they returned everyone that I'd grown up playing in the backyard with. I mean, I'm telling you, like, when I talk every single day in the summer from age 10 to 14, it was every single day there was something going on. Um, So now we get to play our game that we've always been playing in the summers, but it's in front of everybody. It's in front of the newspaper. It's it's all that all the stories I'd come home with and tell my parents. Hey, I, you know, I did this, this, and this today over at AJ's and played really well against those guys. Now it was time for the whole city to see it. So we end up winning. Um, we win one to nothing, and I go complete game and strike out like nine or ten and. It's just one of those moments where, you know, everything came together uh, for a lot of people to see over a two-hour span, but that moment in time was made four and five years before that. That was happening four or five years before that, and everyone got to just see it at at that point. So 
Uh, I know that's her favorite. Uh, my dad, um, it might have been in basketball when I broke the, the scoring record against his alma mater. So uh, my dad scored 1,000 points and was fifth on the all-time scoring list at his high school, St. Mary's. And my sophomore year, uh, I'm playing at St. Mary's in the gym he used to play in, and I set this, the scoring record at the time for points in a single game. Um, and it, the, I remember, you know, making a bucket and them calling me his name as opposed to, you know, Kyle. They would say Dan Hallock for, for three or something like that. So um, that might have been his. Uh, I know he really liked the championships uh, that we won in high school, um, probably going to state like we did uh, my senior year and maybe even losing the regional finals my junior year for baseball. But um, I would say those those couple games for him, it would definitely be one of those uh, high school-wise. So, yeah, they uh, they were always there. And I would I just remember coming back and saying, hey, you know, I did this and this over at AJ's house against these guys. And then that, that game against St. Mary's uh, was no different uh, than any of those outcomes back then in, in the in the summer in the side yard it just got to be on a a real diamond and everyone got to see it so obviously <clears throat> you really uh really enjoyed baseball growing up you played it all the time but now you got into high school mm -hmm. got a couple years under your belt and eventually you had to start thinking about college mm -hmm. so who who i guess recruited you for baseball and uh what kind of what kind of grabbed your interest and what, what were some of your top schools that you were considering? So I would say the recruiting process for me started back, I'd say a little bit after my freshman year. Um, I had a good first year on varsity. We had a lot of guys returning. Um, our head coach, Ray Neal has coached a lot of great talent, and he's a great talent evaluator and really good, uh, and his word is valued by a lot of college and professional guys uh, in the game of baseball. So, you know, he, he kind of informed me that I could be a next-level guy after that season, um, and it was just going to come down to, you know, how good I wanted to be, uh, like it does with anything in life, you know, and how much work you put in, how much focus, um, while you're putting in that work and, and just what you're willing to give up to make that happen. So we had that conversation after my freshman year. And I would say uh, nowadays it's the showcase circuit. Um, the University of Finley came to Perkins High School my sophomore year, and that was kind of to get a gauge of, you know, would I fall in, uh, where would I fall, Division One, Two, or Three at that point. Um, so they gave Coach a report that was, you know, actually really, really good. And um, so building off that, you know, I wanted to play baseball at the highest level. So I would say my junior year, uh, Kent State, Toledo, Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, Cincinnati, Wake Forest, Georgia Tech, uh, Bowling Green, Miami of Ohio, Ohio University, uh, Central Michigan. Those, you know, those were, were kind of the main ones. Um, I went to a prospect camp at Toledo, and the eye opener for me was. I get up on the mound, uh, I just finished my sophomore year, and it's the end of the summer, so I'm about to start my junior year in the fall. Um, go there, I face like uh, five hitters. Straight the first four out, the next guy reaches on an air. Head coach Corey Mee goes, Kyle, throw one more. 
throw to one more hitter. So, okay, guy on first, want to see me out of the stretch. Um, throw a strike, then uh, pick the guy off at first and then strike that last guy out. So then I go, uh, you know, we get into batting practice. And I was, you know, I was a pretty good high school hitter. Um, I end up hitting like, you know, 10 line drives, just gap to gap, perfect. Uh, go out, uh, run the 60, run the 60 in like a, you know, high 6-7, low 6-8, something like that, um, which are all like really good numbers uh, for, for, you know, that for high school baseball. And then I go out to center field, and I wasn't really surprised with myself at that point in the day. I kind of opened my own eyes when a guy was stealing second, I'm playing center field, and the ball ricochets off the middle infielder, goes into short right center, and I'm you know running over to get it, sprinting after it. I was always sprinting. I was always moving somewhere fast. And I go pick it up, and the guy's going to third. Well, I make a throw to the third baseman. And normally, when the ball comes out of your hand, you have an idea of whether you know you're going to be able to hit the guy in the in the chest or all that kind of stuff, or it's going to short hop or long hop. So I throw it, and I'm like, "Oh, this, you know, this will probably one hop him." The ball carried all the way to the third baseman on like a line straight down out of my hand, and that's kind of when I was like, "Oh, that's that's good. That's in me." So once that came out the first time. That's who I was going to be every single time. And, you know, I'm sitting there talking to the guys there, the other the other players, and this would have been in the summer of 2005, so they're all 2005, 2006 graduates, and they kind of asked me, you know, when you're, what year do you graduate? You're your senior. I said, no, I'm, going to, I'm entering my junior year. And they kind of gave me like a look, you know, that you would give like an alien. You know, it, it didn't look... It's, wasn't normal it wasn't you know f frequent I guess so when that day happened I kind of made that choice okay this is who I'm going to be in golf in football in basketball in baseball um, and I wanted to be the face of Perkins sports that's as honest as I could put it whatever season I wanted to be the guy um, I wasn't going to sit there and, you know, concede being the second or third best in anything at any point in the year. Um, so, you know, that happened. And then early on, I was throwing bullpens before this season started my junior year. And Kent's there, Ohio State's there, Notre Dame's there, Michigan's all there to watch bullpens. And that's like when the buzz like really started to go. And that's when you're kind of like, okay, this this can be this can be really big because those kind of schools don't don't normally stop by, you know, Sandusky, Ohio, unless they're in the summer taking their family on vacation. Um, they had been there for other players before me, but they hadn't been back, you know, in a, in a little bit. Um, so that was, that was kind of like, you know, all right, they think you're pretty good. Now you got to show everyone how good you are. Um, cause there were no showcases back then. Uh, th there were, but I asked my dad about it and I was kind of like, Hey, you know, what do you think of the showcase thing? And he goes, uh, if you're good enough, they'll come, they'll come here. That's what he said. Uh, so that's the way we approached it. Coach Neal did a great job of calling and contacting those schools, and then it was up to me to perform, which was great, just the way I wanted it. Um, I wanted that pressure. I wanted all that, all that kind of stuff. You know, everything that came with that. Um, of, you know, potentially being successful and, and leading your team to, to championships. I wanted them, them there to, to check out my buddies too. You know. Uh, I had another great pitcher along with me in high school that always pushed me, and Brennan Smith, and he went and pitched uh, three years uh, at Bowling Green and had a great career there and got drafted by the Tigers and was playing professional baseball with them. So um, I always looked for competition. I always welcomed competition, and that's that. those were the schools that were in the mix 
Um, and then, you know, July 1st happens, and that's when you can first contact recruits over the phone. So, um, you know, I get up at like 9 a.m., I think, and I didn't have a cell phone at the time, so the phone was ringing in the morning a little bit, probably woke me up, I would imagine, and my mom had a list of like seven or eight schools that had already called. And, um, you know, just wanting to set up visits, wanting to touch base, all that kind of stuff. And uh, Kent wasn't one of them that day on July 1st. Uh, and when I talked to Coach Strickland, uh, his theory was that he had figured, you know, and it was genius at the time because I couldn't tell you the list of the 10 schools or whatever that had called at that point in the day. But he called two days later, and that's what made him stick out. So while everyone else is calling, you know, on this date, somewhat getting lost in the mix a little bit, not intentionally, but just by the number of, you know, who called this and they called it this time, and okay, I got to, you know, get all, the, all my stuff together when I call him back. He calls, you know, 7 o'clock, two, three days later, and it's just different. And that's, that's when I knew. I wanted to be different as a player and a person than a lot of people, um, just based on the standards you know my parents set uh, for me. And and he was a different guy. Coach Birkbeck is a different guy. You don't come across those guys very often. Those types of people. Uh, Coach Daly, same thing. You had three individuals on that coaching staff that were different, and you could tell. Um, so we, you know, we go and, you know, I'm talking to all these schools, making the visits and weighing what I like with, you know, each, each university, each conversation and uh, get the information about Coach Birkbeck's history in the game and developing pitchers and, you know, get an understanding of Coach Strickland with, with how he operates and how he holds his players to a to a standard plus they had the best set of players there at the time to push me so i wanted to go where the competition was it was it could have been you could be a big fish in a little pond and at another school i didn't want that i wanted to go find out how good these guys were and how good I could be and how good they could make me because that's what had happened when I was 10 years old and AJ stopped by the house and said, hey, come play with my buddies. They made me really, really good, those kids in my neighborhood. Um, the guys at Kent were going to make me really, really good. It was the same cycle of events is what I was looking at. So, uh, and Fortunately, I've always had great coaches in baseball uh, from, you know, my father, Bob Sullivan, Jim Patton, Paul Mullins, uh, Ray Neal, uh, to, to going on to college with uh, Berkey, Strick, and Coach Daly. So I've been surrounded by people that could constantly push me, and I thought, you know, definitely the guys at Kent would get the most out of me. And it was funny because everyone at the time was kind of like, you know, they see Ohio State, they see the logos, you know, they see Georgia Tech fly in, they see, you know, they hear about Wake Forest calling and, and all those kind of, you know, big time guys. And Kent didn't have the lights that they have next to their name right now. But I wanted to go put a put a couple lights next to those names. That was that was my goal was to go to get with guys that are like me because they told me they were recruiting personalities like me uh, with the same backgrounds and, and that's who that's where I wanted to make it happen. And I wanted to do it for, for Kent State and they were gonna help me do it. So at the end of it, I think by the end of July I had been to Kent and taken an unofficial visit, and they let me try their championship rings on that they were going to get, and it was a, it was a done deal. 
it was this guy's going to get drafted this year, this guy's going to graduate, and these are the championship ranks. That's what that's what Coach Strickland told me to do. We graduate kids, we win championships, we make you better. I mean, that's graduate kids, win championships, and everyone here will have the opportunity to get drafted if that's an avenue they want to go. So Kent was the place for me. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. So um, graduated from Perkins, mm -hmm. then you went to Kent State. How did stuff go for your go for you your freshman year academically and uh, baseball? So academically and baseball in the fall was outstanding. It was great. Uh, it's pretty smooth actually. It was a smooth transition going back to time management. Now, whereas you you know you get into high school and first bell rings at 7:45, got to be in class by 7:50. You're here, 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 here at this time. You have nothing. This is you got practice at this time. You have class at this time. Um, and for a, a lot of college kids, uh, class seemed optional at that point. Uh, but for for us on the baseball team, it wasn't. Uh, for me personally, it wasn't an option. So I got off to a great start in the classroom, and kind of like we talked about earlier, if I had like a 7.30 a.m. class and we were assigned homework and I didn't have class till you know noon, that homework was done. It was just done. So then all I had to do was focus on baseball. Again, get all my schoolwork done, knock that out while it was fresh in my mind, and then get to practice, and now it's just... How good of a baseball player can I be? So we did that. I went with that routine, and it worked out great. I had like a 3-9, 3-8, 3-9 uh, fall my freshman year. So we get to the spring. Go out there. Uh, first appearance, pitch really well. Second appearance, got to face the number one team in the country in North Carolina. Uh, number two overall pick is in the lineup, uh, Dustin Ackley. I throw five scoreless, you know, punch out five or six guys, give up one hit. Cell phone at that time is blowing up. And just, I mean, absolutely text messages from everywhere. Uh, so what happened was I kind of thought this is how it's going to be. I thought, you know, this is going to be kind of easy. Um, it wasn't. I get a start at Washington State. I pitch pretty well. Um, again, you know, now I'm now I'm not pitching out of the bullpen. Now I'm starting, and I thought, oh, this is, I'm good, and this seems pretty easy. And I'm still, you know, doing, you know, whatever's asked of me, but not a whole lot more. And that was the difference. And that's where my season started to go downhill a little bit. Because I thought it was going to be easy, you know, we see some teams on the schedule that don't have the notoriety of North Carolina or Washington State, and I kind of think oh, this is this will be an easier lineup to face than the last one. So um, I would say, you know, didn't focus as well as I could have. Um, started to get hit a little bit. Didn't know how to deal with the adversity. Um, and then I would pitch out of the bullpen here and there, and then I. Did I traveled to Northern Illinois? I traveled to Northern Illinois, made that bus trip from Kent to DeKalb, and I did not pitch that weekend. And that was kind of when I said, okay, this is never going to happen again. This is the point I'm at. They're able to use other guys, and I'm never going to be here again. So that happened, um, and then I would start some midweek games and um, pitch on the weekends, and I worked my way back, back into the you know, one of the guys out of the bullpen and, and start midweek games, and I end up closing out a couple games in the MAC tournament my freshman year, and we make it to the championship game, and it was kind of up and down. It was really good at the beginning, then hit a valley, uh, then pitch well at. Miami of Ohio towards the end of the year pitched well in the MAC tournament um, 
But my GPA, again, I want to say it was like a 2.7. So my mom and I got together, and we did the same kind of thing we did in high school. You have to be, in high school, the, the academic standards were you have to make the honor roll every single quarter. So that's 3.5 or higher at Perkins. Uh, that was, it was non-negotiable. Like I said, there were some things that were options. There were things that weren't options. Uh, same thing with Kent. You have to have Dean's List in the fall because uh, you're not playing your games, which was a 3-4 or better. And then you have to have over a 3-0 in the spring when, you know, all that stuff's going on. So that's the, that's the standard we set, and that's, that's what I did, you know, from my sophomore year on. And that's met that every single time, and I walked out of there with over a 3.0, uh, I think it's like a 3-2-something GPA and all that kind of stuff. So my freshman year was, I would say, a normal freshman year. Really good, not so good, finished really good, and learned what worked for me and learned what didn't work for me. You know, what kind of schedule? You know, what's this night consist of? What do I need to do this night to get ready to, you know, to pitch or get my projects done or, you know, keep up appearances with my friends? You know, I just started scheduling out this day is for this. Um, and then that's kind of how, how things rolled, how I figured it out, I guess would be the best way to put it. Obviously, you had a lot of successes in college. Um, what do you say was, like, the best? Winning championships, individual accolades? What do you think? Uh, definitely winning the championships because when you win, the individual stuff comes along with it. Um, so uh, priority-wise, it's winning championships, 100%. Um, they don't acknowledge those who don't win individually not 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 a whole lot at least um we focused on winning championships uh we graduated my class graduated winning four conference championships back in high school you know we won three conference championships went to the regionals my last two regional finals my last two years made to state my senior year so winning i my numbers were my numbers uh, because I played with good players, dating back to high school, uh, I was named you know all Ohio, uh, three years in basketball, twice on the second team, and that was because we won. And that's kind of what I tell everyone: you don't do that, you don't get that stuff unless you win championships or you take your team to places or you take your program places it's never been before. So that was always my goal. Wherever I was at, from high school to college, leave the program better than I found it. Uh, so, you know, you could say we did that in a variety of sports at Perkins High School. Uh, you can say we, we did that at, at Kent State right before the Omaha run. Um, and that was just my goal. Do my part, put myself in a role where individually a lot is expected of me. I want to put myself in a role where a lot is expected of me because that's when I perform best. Um, and I want to be around guys that want to be in that role too because it's only going to make me better. Uh, so winning championships, uh, dogpiling three straight years in Chillicothe, you can't put a price on that. Um, you know we were able to to do things and tell stories that other people wouldn't be able to when my friends and I talk now we don't sit there and talk about each individual's outing or the fact that you know this guy was an all-american this guy was pitcher of the year we talk about the championships that we won and those individual accolades I'm convinced are a result of being a part of successful teams and if you're around enough guys like that they'll make you better and then the individual stuff will come after you win um, so you don't get as far unless you win and i don't think you you know you deserve it unless your team wins so that's kind of my feeling with individual accomplishments you you win you deserve everything that comes after that starts there 
So you made it to college and you got through your freshman year and you figured a lot of things out, obviously, and you started to have success and you kind of, you had it figured out in high school, but then it's like you had to kind of re-figure it out mm -hmm. in college and did that, started to do well. Um, but then obviously, and I'm sure you thought about this before you got to college, but now you start to think about maybe the next level after that. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a theme throughout your life so far. It's always, always the next level, the next level. So when... When in college would you say that that really started to kind of become a reality a little bit? You know, you maybe receive some calls that scouts would be coming. Or mm -hmm. when, did, when did that start to happen? I would say it was part of my Achilles heel my freshman year because after that North Carolina outing, I kind of wondered why I didn't get drafted out of high school and kind of wondered, you know, why? Why? And that stunted my growth a lot at that point. Instead of you know riding that and wanting to become better and better and better, I kind of sat there and thought, you know, could I play professional baseball right now? I thought I was ready then. I wasn't. Obviously, I wasn't. Um, and the game of baseball let me know that. Coach Birkbeck, Coach Strickland did a great job of letting me know that. I was good, but I wasn't there yet. Um, and that's what great coaches do. They let me they let you know that, you know, you're pretty good, but they always tell you, they always leave you with, you're not there yet. Um so I would say my, you know, summer after my sophomore year, uh we had a term at Kent we used uh, Going, when you're going in your junior year, we called it, you know, my buddies and I, we called it contract year. Uh, and that was, you know, your first chance to where you can make an impression and you're the next set of, of juniors that are draft eligible. Now, you're still progressing with your degree, and I graduated in four years. But after my sophomore year, it was, it's, you know, it's go time. I was on a three-year plan at college. Get as much of my degree done as possible, get good grades, get everybody out, move on to professional baseball and, and learn how to become a, a good person and be successful in the real world the day baseball is done. So I went down to Virginia after my sophomore year of college uh, with my college roommate and it was a chance for us to play against, you know, great competition in the Wood Bat League called the Coastal Plains League. And that's kind of that was the mindset we made, you know, we, we said how much, you know, let's, let's see how high we can get drafted this year. That's kind of what we thought. So went down there first 17 innings, gave up 16 earned runs. You know, I was away from home. I was outside of Ohio for the first time in my life. I had never, you know, been away from home for an extended period of time. I would say that you can't, it's not drivable, really, because this was Hampton, Virginia. This was nine, ten hours away. Mom and Dad can't get to me like they can at Kent an hour and a half. So, 17 innings, 16 earned. <clears throat> was starting, then not starting. And I was surrounded by a lot of players um, that, you know, weren't familiar with Kent State, weren't familiar with baseball in the North, and my... My numbers, you know, reflected an opinion that maybe baseball in the North wasn't that great uh, for a lot of those those guys. Uh, so I had to refigure it out immediately and figure out how to adapt to that environment. And all I did was continue to work harder, continue to focus more. And I think the last 35 innings, I gave up one or two earned. The rest of the way and started in the, the Coastal Plains Championship League game um, and put myself in a position, put our team in a position to win. Uh, and, and the scouts, I, what I realized is the scouts, those that are looking for, you know, the right things, they're looking for winners. And I was already at a place that won and can. We're going to win there. I know that. We're going to win. But now I got to go somewhere else. And, and prove that I'm a winner and prove that I'm used to winning 
and then I can get, you know, we can get these guys here to win. And that's kind of what we did. We won a lot there. Um, then I come back to Kent in the fall. You know, everything's in order. Um, and then we, we win another conference championship. We make history that year in the tournament. Uh, get picked by the Phillies. Go in the summer. Um, they're deciding on whether they want to, you know, sign me and stuff like that. And we're coming to contract negotiations here and there. Um, and then I would say... The fact that uh, Coach Strickland, Coach Birkbeck, Coach Daly were all going to be back at Kent. We were returning uh, to future big leaguers in Andrew Chafin and Travis Shaw. Uh, my whole apartment, myself, uh, Justin Gill, Ben Klushinski were all coming back no matter what. Our catcher was coming back. Uh, and David Lyon. We had some, some new guys coming in, freshmen coming in. Evan Campbell was moving to the outfield. Uh, I thought this team could be an Omaha-type team. So when I talked to the Phillies, I said, is this my only chance at professional baseball? And they said, no, absolutely not. You'll get drafted next year. So I said, there's my answer. I'm going back. My buddies and I are coming back to make history. And uh, we did a little bit of that. Um, that year and we kind of set the stage for what would become you know kind of Kent State baseball as people know it today and um, that's I thought the draft would take care of itself if we won games we won championships and I did my part that's all I thought about when it came to the draft if I do my job go out there seven eight innings uh, punch people out get ground balls leave with the lead hand it over to the bullpen, draft would take care of itself. Because someone's going to want to draft guys that are used to winning. And that's that's what I felt Houston did uh, when they picked me. And then they ended up signing my roommate as a free agent deal. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they're successful right now in the big leagues because they're looking for the right things. And that was what was unique about uh, that situation and the whole draft process. You know, you get the interviews, you get phone calls, face-to-face you know, -face interviews, and <clears throat> you're just, you know, you decide, you know, this is who I am, and it's their job to decide if they like that, if they like you on the mound, but I'm just going to do what I do, and, you know, we're going to win, and that's out of my hands. I don't have a draft pick. I can't draft myself. So uh, that's up to them. That's their job. And my job at Kent was to win championships and graduate in four years. So it's what I did. So now as a coach, is there anything you wish you knew now as a player that could have helped you? Or? I would say um, as a coach, I would have encouraged myself to figure things out earlier on in my career um, from a sense of not necessarily at baseball because I always, you know, I always focused at practice. I always, uh, I always lived by the motto, great players never have a bad practice. I don't think I had bad practices there. I think I was a guy that always did what I, what I asked, early, what was asked of me earlier on in my career. You know, whatever they wanted, I did. Um, I did it with that level of focus. But I could have done more to get ahead of the curve, to get ahead of the wall. I hit my freshman year a little bit. Uh, I could have done more. And I didn't foresee it coming. No one ever does when you're 18 years old and you've, you know, you've flat out dominated people in high school and you know, you've had that amount of success and you're winning and the team's still winning at Kent like we were, but I didn't, I wasn't playing as big a role as I wanted to. And I, I needed to understand that that, that would come from working harder earlier on in my career, uh, doing extra. Uh, cause I did everything at a high level in practice. I felt, but I needed to do extra away, away from, uh, you know, practice and that's what I learned when I hit that wall my freshman year that good is not good enough 
uh, and there's always someone better than you, and that's what my dad always told me. So that's kind of, that would be the advice I would give myself as, you know, an 18-year-old, 19-year-old freshman at Kent. Do more earlier. This is good, but it ain't good enough. Not to where you want to get to. Okay. Um, do you have any short-term or long-term goals that you can think of as far as coaching or just in life at all? Well, I wanted to get my master's. I knew that was something I wanted to get, and I'm about a month away from getting that. Um, I would like uh, to coach at the highest level of college baseball I can uh, someday, but I've never been one to just kind of move, uh, move on until the place I'm at is in a good spot. Uh, for example, you know Perkins High School. I you know I, there was a lot I wanted to accomplish there from a team standpoint before I was ready to move on to college. And we did, we did a lot of that. Uh, Kent, we did as much as we possibly could have in my four years there. Um, here, I don't want to be able to, you know, necessarily leave this place until it's at a level that, you know, is, is greatly respected around the college baseball industry. And, uh, and, that's that's happening you know uh, there are guys here that are going to be highly successful on the field and in life and it's my job as a coach to facilitate that to let them know this is what you do well this is what we need to work on and wherever you want to get to in life you know I, I have to be ready to help put you in that position and for me I want to do that at the highest level I, you know, I possibly can, um, but I, I never want to leave a place before getting it on the right track, and I think we're, we're definitely on the right track here with what we're doing and uh, the type of guys we have here and the type of guys that are coming in. Uh, it's very exciting, so um, coaching's a year-to-year -year thing. You never know what opportunities are going to come your way. Um, I just know what I have here now. Um, especially, you know, from a player and person standpoint, I couldn't be happier with the type of guys we have and the guys that are on their way here. So to conclude, uh, if you were going to say anything to, like, a 15 or 16-year-old kid to uh, make him a better baseball player, let him know anything, what would you say? I would ask what their plans are. Uh, I would say at the, you know, my age, I probably had a plan when I was 10. Uh, with how society moves and the speed at which uh, our world is living, which is extremely fast compared to when I grew up in the 90s, uh, you would probably have to do some things at an earlier age. I would tell them don't specialize in a specific sport. I would say play them all. Um, I would say... Um, do something every day to get to where you want to get to. Um, because when I stopped playing, I did everything I possibly could have uh, to make it to the big leagues. And I'm all right with it. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with what my team's accomplished. I'm fine with what I accomplished. I can live with that. And that's kind of what you want to, you know, put into perspective. It's tough because, you know, 15, 16-year-olds, um, they're figuring things out, and you know a lot of them feel that they have you know a lot of those things in place to where they they know the outcome already. But um, I remember Coach Strickland saying to us at college, and he'd tell us, uh, "I've been 19, 20, 21 years old. You've never been, you know, 37." And he's right. My parents are, you know, the same way. They're, they're along the same lines of thinking. I would tell them, listen to your parents. That, that would be what I would tell them. They've been 15, 16 years old. You know, you've never been their age. So play multiple sports. Compete in everything you do. Find a way to be the best. Win, because everyone likes winners. 
and and just you know listen to your parents because they've been there and appreciate your parents and thank them even when they don't expect it call them randomly call them randomly and thank them for the opportunities they've given you and and just take everything a day at a time and be as good as you possibly can in the classroom first because that's where it's going to count and then you know obviously on the baseball field so that's keep things simple well, I'm sure that would be great advice for uh, anyone looking to to play at college level or uh, succeed in life uh, that concludes our oral history and thank you very much Kyle uh, we appreciate it yeah good luck thank fellas you. all right